Hey there everyone, I'm back from a long winter break and uh, back to start doing some uh, YouTube tutorials. Uh, I saw that a lot of people were having some trouble with uh, setting up their bones in Lightwave, so let me bring in a little object here. I'm going to delete this little extra box here. Alright, move this off the side. And let, let me show you what I think uh, the problem is happening with people. Let's go to the Setup tab. Turn on Bone X-Ray so we can see the bones. And people are having a trouble when they uh, add bones to objects. A lot of people on my comment pages are saying that uh, after they add the bones and turn them on, that the mesh gets all screwed up. And uh, I'm going to show you what I think is going on here. But let's add a bone. Uh, let's go over here. I'm going to hit Shift R to uh, size it up. Re remember, do not when you're editing the uh, bones. Into, into the mesh here to design your rig. All right, do not use H for stretch or for scale. Don't use that. If you want to make the bone bigger, use Shift R instead. Okay. If you use the uh, scale tool, you will totally screw things up, and and your rig will later on it will become more and more unstable. All right, we'll hit equals for a child bone. We'll make a couple child bones, and we'll. Scale that one down. All right, so now we have a couple bones here. So let's go ahead and uh, now that we have our bones in our mesh the way we want them and they're the right size and everything looks great, let's go ahead and go and turn the bones on. Okay, what happened? Why did you know this isn't what I wanted? Well, the problem is that uh, we never told Lightwave, we never recorded the resting position of these bones. So Lightwave is trying to deform the object without having kind of a starting off point for the deformation. It doesn't know what the mesh was supposed to look like to begin with. It's just deforming the uh, the object. It's like if you add a deformer, if you, and also when you select the object, you'll see that the original bounding box, the object, is where it used to be, but that the object has been uh, moved over. It's because you have basically add this deformer without having any kind of starting off point. So the way you do that, you can still recu recuperate from this. You don't need to redraw all your bones. Just select the first bone in the hierarchy and press R, okay? And then that will record the resting position position of the bone. Make sure you're on frame zero. Don't do it in frame 20 or something like that. Okay, now hit the down arrow key and select the next one. Okay, sometimes the, as you go through this and you, and you activate these bones, uh, you'll see the mesh actually ends up looking worse, but it will only do that until you've gotten all the bones activated. So now I will activate all these bones. I hit R on all those. So now we go to bones on. Well, we don't see anything happen. But if I go and and press Y, you'll see that the bones are active. And that's exactly the way it should happen. Once you turn the bones on and activate the bones, you should actually when you hit R, it's going to activate the bone as well. So if you wanted, for example, uh, this bone here to not be active, you could go in here and, and turn the bone off. Act Okay, but you should still do um, R for everything because that records the resting position of the bone, all right? I'm going to turn that bone back on, all right? So now you'll see that the mesh doesn't jump away and, and look crazy, and it deforms the way we would expect it to. All right, now let me show you. So let's say um, we've gotten this, and we realize that, um, you know what? Uh, we need a couple extra bones here. So I'm going to hit equals... I'm going to add a child bone here. I'm going to move it off to the side. And then I'll hit equal to make another child bone. Move it over here. Let's say for whatever reason we decided we, we wanted these bones here. All right. All right. And now let's go ahead and say bones on. Okay. And then again, everything's activated and stuff, but it doesn't know the resting position of these new bones. So again, we don't have to necessarily redo the whole thing from scratch. Select the new bones we added, R and R. And so now you'll see that, now of course because we add these new bones, when we do actually move them, as you can see, it holds the mesh in a different uh, place than it used to be, but that's probably why you add them in the first place, is to give it a certain type of control to it. Um, the problem is that sometimes, for example, uh, in a complex rig, maybe we never want to animate these bones we just need them in there to hold the shape of this mesh in place when we animate the other bones so um, a lot of times uh, people will go in and 
they will go ahead and, and hide, they'll lock and hide these bones so that they can't be seen, they can't accidentally be animated. So then they'll be moving this stuff around and um, sometimes when they turn, oops, they turn the bones off and then when they turn them back on, sometimes they've forgotten to set the, the rest length and even though they've selected all these and hit R for them, uh, they couldn't select those uh, bones that were hidden and locked. So sometimes if you notice that your your mesh isn't uh, goes crazy when you turn the bones on, you will uh, probably look for the culprit as being inside of your scene editor. See if you've uh, locked and hidden these bones. Then go ahead and select them and press the R key for those. And then once you've done that, everything should look pretty good. All right. If you're still having troubles after that, then uh, I, th I suggest you make a, a little video of how you've been setting up your object and uh, let me know, you know, put that up somewhere and then people can post comments on what you're doing uh, to cause that. I hope this helps out.